All right, so what do you expect out of preseason game number three, Coach Mack? Going to be very interesting with you know with the developments you know, of what's going on. There's still some decisions to be made on this football team because some of these down-the-line players, they put themselves in consideration mm-hmm. just because of the way they've been playing. So I expect to see those guys get one more chance to show what they can do. You know, Makai Sargent is, I tell you, he's got something interesting going on right now. Before the Tampa game, you asked me what position I was looking at. I said the running back. You did. I said because one and two are not going to play, so two, three, and four move up to one, two, and three. And so let's see what they can do. Makai Sargent is taking full advantage of this of this opportunity he has coming in here as a free agent from Iowa. You know what's really interesting is when you talk to the head coach and the general manager about Makai Sargent, they both start smiling. I don't know if he's on this football team or not, but I think he's got a future. The fact that after he scored that touchdown on that roll boot, he went right out and lined up on the kickoff team. And ran down hard. And ran down hard. That's what hits you in the heart as a coach because you know that's the way he's going to have to make it. It's great to see him out there from the line of scrimmage, but when that's going to be his role and he's more than willing to do it, that's why they smile. He's certainly taking advantage of, of the opportunities uh, in special teams as well. And we, we all know uh, in this league, in this position, if, if you can't, help the team in special teams you you start to you start to kind of minimize opportunities uh to make teams whether you're here or anywhere else in the nfl so he's done a a really really good job of taking advantage of the opportunities i mean i think that's what this organization is about that's the way it's been since we walked in with coach, with john and coach raves it's one of the things we can sell to free agents uh when, when whether they're college free agents or someone that's coming in from around the league that you come here and you do your job, you'll get an opportunity to show what you can do. And if you can help the team win, you'll be in there. We've all been wondering about this backup quarterback situation, Woodside and Barkley. How close (laughs) is Matt Barkley to being the number two quarterback of this team? Well, he certainly took a step forward Saturday night, I think. Again, it's a numbers game. Uh, with what Matt Barkley was able to do the other night, you know, I, I think he's got a, a serious shot to be the backup. But every time that Logan Woodside throws a dime to, you know, Des Fitzpatrick, who needed a shock paddle in this thing, you know, it makes you think. Yeah, I think you just want, for that position, you want constant competition. I think that's been the mode the whole way since we've been here, and uh, that continues. Logan's awesome. Love that guy. Nothing changes for him. He just comes in and competes every day, locked in, ready to go. Um, that's one of those redeeming traits that he's always had and has uh, helped him be here. You know, Matt has a lot of arm talent. He really does. And uh, he's done a good job of picking up the system. It's hard coming in and then all of a sudden be thrown out there, learning a new system. But he's been around a lot. Um, each day it gets a little better for him. Uh, so far it's been good as being able to operate the offense and, and get us in the end zone. I mean, I'm a pro. This is kind of what I've had to do for the last eight years of my career and um, was semi-familiar with this offense. Don't have a whole lot of experience with it, uh, but as things are kind of starting to come back, um, I'm starting to get used to the play calls. Uh, and, and that's really the, the toughest part is just being able to spit out play calls and being able to visualize everything. Because uh, at the end of the day, football is football. You know, I know how to read defenses, know how to see the big picture. Routes are routes, which you've run before, but it's being able to speak the language, be on the same picture with, with Todd and uh, in the offense, uh, and, and really just getting timing down with these guys. Because like that route to, to Mason, I had not thrown in practice before. So at the same time, it's a route you've thrown before to other guys, so you kind of just got to trust that he's going to be there. Uh, but as time progresses and I'm here longer, you know, hopefully that progresses as well. Nissan Stadium is the home of the preseason finale between the Tennessee Titans and Chicago Bears. The Vrabel-less Titans have the chance to show their foundation of Vrabel football is firmly in place, even without the head coach in the house. Hey, man, it's another opportunity today, man. Take advantage of every opportunity today, man. We got home today for the first time. Let's go shot in front of these fans. Let's go make some plays, man. Run around. Hit hard get some picks, baby. Let's go. Let's have one. Razor Blade is in the building. We got the Tennessee Titans in the building. We're going to do our thing again once again, baby. Let's do it. Y'all already know. I don't ever got to say it. It's game day. Come on. And we're about ready for the third and final preseason game of 2021. Hey, hey, let, let's empty the tank, man. Let's empty the tank. Empty the tank. Empty the tank, man. 
scoreless game, 7.57 to go in the first. Hills in the gun with Williams on his right hip on fourth and one. Gonna give it to Williams right up the middle. He gets away from Brown slightly, but Simmons finishes him. He does not make it. Here they come. Woodside gets rid of it. Fires for Batson. It's caught at the nine. Batson breaks a tackle at the five and is taken down at the three. So the Titans will start at the Bears three when the second quarter commences. After one, Tennessee nothing, Chicago nothing. Hey, let's go. Let's get in there. Fourth and a foot for a touchdown. One yard. We got this. Woodside turns, gives the sergeant who gets low and gets in. Touchdown, Titans. Spike it, spike it. Spike it. Titans seven, Bears nothing, 13-28 to go. Second quarter at Nissan Stadium. Seven to seven, that's the count. 7.22 remaining in the first half. Gonna give it to Sargent on the right, and there goes Mackay. He's across the 30 to the 32, maybe the 33. Archibong will make the tackle. From the gun with a blitz coming. Screen pass, blasting game. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and he's taken down. He accelerated. 21-yard field goal out of the hold of Kern. Snap, set, Fickens' kick is up, and his kick is good. 147 to go, second quarter, 10 to seven is your score. 7.50 to go in the third quarter. Bears leading by 11. Play fake, Barkley looking, firing downfield. Fitzpatrick has it at the 45 to the 40, and he is run out of bounds by Graham. Let's go, Dad! Bears up tight. Give Hawkins finding a way. Yes! Touchdown, tight! JV and Hawkins for a big six. New score with 3.04 to go in the third quarter. Chicago Bears 21, Tennessee Titans 17. Woodside from the gun. Here they come again. Blitz. Throw down the middle. There's Forrest Hall at the 30. And Forrest Hall is tackled at the 27. Woodside throws the fade. Left side for Batson. Touchdown. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and stack that line, Bears. Touchdown. Cameron Batson. And that's it. That's it. Final score, Chicago Bears 27, Tennessee Titans 24. We left a lot on the table. Still a lot of room to be done. Still a lot of room for improvement. You know, I think history has shown that they've made some pretty good decisions. It's nice to be in a, in a spot where there is competitive roster battles and there are some tough decisions to make. Uh, and I think that that's a testament to how hard all these guys have worked.